Kingdom of West Francia. The Kingdom of West Francia, 843 to 987 CE, also known as the Kingdom of the West Franks, was the region of Western Europe that formed the western part of the Carolingian Empire of Charlemagne, Holy Roman Emperor 800 to 814 CE, known as Francia or the Kingdom of the Franks. The region was once part of the land known as Gaul and when the Roman Empire fell during the 5th century CE, was taken largely by the Visigoths, although other peoples also claimed land. These various ethnic groups and principalities were conquered by the Salian Frank King Childeric I, RC 458-481 CE, who continued the policies of his father Merovec, founder of the Merovingian dynasty, 450-751 CE. The Carolingian Empire, 800-888 CE, came to power after a long period of unrest, civil war, and invasions and again united the land under the reign of Charlemagne and his successors until 843 CE when it was divided into West Francia, later France, and East Francia, later Germany, with Middle Francia eventually becoming the Alsace-Lorraine region. West Francia is featured significantly in the TV series Vikings which follows the adventures of the legendary Viking raider and King Ragnar Lothbrok. The Vikings launched a number of raids on the region throughout the 9th century CE, laying siege to Paris twice, until the Frankish king Charles the Simple, 893-923 CE, negotiated with the Viking leader Rollo, 911-927 CE, for peace and protection in exchange for land. West Francia would prosper under succeeding kings up through the rise of the Cape Tien dynasty, whose founder hailed from Isle de France, establishing the Kingdom of France in the region in 987 CE. After the fall of the Western Roman Empire in the 5th century, the region known as Gaul was governed by separate kingdoms of the Visigoths, Alemanni, and others until its conquest by the Salian Franks under Merovec and Childeric I who founded the Merovingian dynasty. Childeric I's son, Clovis I, 466-511, would unite the land under his reign to become the first king of the Franks, ruling from 509 to 511, and the region appears in documents at this time under the name Francia. After Clovis I's death, his kingdom was divided between his four sons, reunited under the reign of Clothar I, 511 to 588, and then again divided into the three territories of Austrasia, Burgundy, and Neustria. Although ruled by kings, the actual power in government was the position known as mayor of the palace, roughly equivalent to a prime minister, whose occupant made all the actual decisions and formed policy while the king appeared in public ceremonies and performed necessary rituals. The most powerful of these mayors was Pepin of Herstal, 635-714, who defeated his opponents in battle in 687 and proclaimed himself Duke and Prince of the Franks, reigning 687 to 714. His son and successor was Charles Martel, 718 to 741, famous for his victory over the invading Muslim armies at the Battle of Tours in 732. Charles's victory secured the borders of Francia and the stability of his reign encouraged overall prosperity which was continued by his successor Pepin the Short, 751 to 768, founder of the Carolingian dynasty and father of Charlemagne. Charlemagne ruled as king of the Franks between 768 to 814, at first with his brother Carloman I until Carloman's death in 771, winning numerous military victories and conquering opponents of the church until he was powerful enough to be proclaimed Holy Roman Emperor in 800 CE and found the Carolingian Empire, 800 to 888. He was succeeded by his son Louis I, Louis the Pious, 814-840, who reformed the empire and emphasized the common bond all his subjects shared in the Christian faith. Louis I succeeded, to a great degree, in creating a homogeneous empire united in faith and vision but this would not last. Upon his death, his sons plunged the region into civil war in a power struggle over who would succeed him. For three years the brothers led their armies against each other until peace was finally established by the Treaty of Verdun in 843. The former empire of Charlemagne and Louis I was divided between the brothers with Louis the German, 843-876, taking East Francia, 
Lothair I, 843 to 855, controlling Middle Francia, and Charles de Bald, 843 to 877, ruling West Francia. Throughout Charlemagne's reign, he engaged in almost incessant warfare to expand his own power and that of the church. His Saxon wars, 772 to 804, carried out to subjugate the region and convert the Norse pagans to Christianity, destroyed the land and resulted in thousands of deaths, most notably in the massacre of Verdun in 782 when Charlemagne ordered the execution of 4,500 Saxons. As many of these Saxons had relatives in Denmark, this outrage was not soon forgotten and the history of West Francia would be significantly impacted by Viking raids primarily from Denmark. The Franks and the Scandinavians were known to each other long before Charlemagne through trade and had been on good terms. Scholar Janet L. Nelson cites a number of examples of cordial relationships including one in which a Frankish bishop, lost in northern Frisia, was helped by Northmen, most likely Danes, Sawyer, 20. The expansion of Frankish power under Charlemagne no doubt worried his neighbors but it is not until the Saxon Wars that there is any evidence of actual conflict. The leader of the Saxon resistance, Wittekind, sought help from Siegfried of the Danes who allowed Saxon refugees into his kingdom and protected them. In 798, Charlemagne demanded that this policy stop and Siegfried complied but, when Saxony was finally conquered in 804, the Danish king Godfred reacted and arrived with a fleet of ships and a large army. He ravaged Frisia, part of Charlemagne's realm at this time, and imposed tribute on the region. Charlemagne was mounting an expedition against him to win back these lands when Godfred died and his successor sued for peace. Even so, the precedent had been set for swift Norse retaliation against Frankish aggression. After Charlemagne's death in 814, other Scandinavian raiders remembered Godfred's success. Attracted by the wealth of the Franks, and with no Charlemagne to fear any longer, they began making incursions up the river Seine to raid Frankish settlements. The first Viking raid was in 820 CE but the raiders had no idea of what kind of force they might be facing, the numbers, or the terrain and so were easily defeated and driven off. When the Vikings returned later, however, they were much better prepared. In 841, the Viking leader Asgir sacked and burned Rouen and much of the surrounding countryside, carrying off substantial loot, other raiders would soon follow his example. Vikings raided West Francia throughout the reign of Charles the Bald. The Norse chieftain Reginhiris, one of the possible inspirations for the Ragnar Lothbrok character, lay siege to Paris in 845 and, when all attempts to end the siege failed, Charles paid the Viking chief to leave. Asgir returned to raid the region in 851-852 and others between 854-858. The famous Bjorn Ironside, claimed to be the son of Ragnar Lothbrok, raided the region alongside the notorious Hastian, also known as Hastine, in 858 and by 860 Charles the Bald had employed a Viking. In 876 the Vikings ravaged and burned the region around Rouen and after Charles's death, came back again to besiege Paris in 885-886, to two raids thought to have been led, or at least participated in, by the Viking chief Rollo. All of these raids destabilized the region and the people lived in a near-constant state of fear of Viking attacks which came with little or no warning and devastated the countryside. Aside from the Viking skills mentioned above by Nelson, what encouraged the success of the Viking raids was the structure of West Francia following the death of Louis I and the division of the empire. Even though the treaty had been struck, there was still tension between the three brothers and this would only worsen later with their successors. Further, although Lothair I, Louis the German, and Charles the Bald ruled their respective regions overall, the distinct principalities within those regions were controlled by counts who held significant power and autonomy. The policies of these counts, naturally, sought to increase their own power at the expense of their neighbors. This peace and order, however, usually was only apparent in the immediate vicinity of their courts and laws were often poorly enforced elsewhere in their districts. Further, the focus on their own lands discouraged any inclination to help those elsewhere. When the Viking raids began, therefore, 
individual regional defense was mounted wherever they struck but help from neighbors could not be counted on. Among the best examples of the power of a count is Odo of Paris who would reign as king of West Francia 888-898. During the period of civil unrest in which the successors of the brothers warred with each other and the Vikings harried the region, Charles the Bald and his sons successively died. At this same time, a man later known as Robert the Strong, 830-866, Count of Anjou, grew in power and wealth through military campaigns and defense of his realm. He was killed in a Viking raid in 866, leaving behind his family including the eldest son Odo. When the last of Charles the Bald's successors had died without an heir, the people of West Francia invited Charles the Fat of East Francia, Louis the German's youngest son, to take control in 884. Between the time of the death of Robert the Strong and the advent of Charles the Fat, Odo of Anjou had grown up to become as powerful a count as his father. When the Vikings attacked Paris in 885, it was Odo who mounted a defense of the city and held off the siege. Charles the Fat, who had no taste for battle of any kind, arrived to relieve the city in 886 but, instead of engaging the Vikings in battle, paid them to leave and directed them to go raid in Burgundy instead. The people then advocated for Odo as king of West Francia and Charles the Fat was deposed in 888. The Viking raids by this time had been going on for nearly a century and Charles needed them to stop. The Viking chief Rollo had been in the country since the Paris siege of 885-886 conducting successful raids from his camp on the Seine between 887-911. Although Rollo certainly destroyed property and crops, and no doubt killed a number of people along the way, he seemed primarily interested in loot and slaves, not murder or destruction just for the sake of it. Nelson notes how events like Rollo's raids demonstrate that Northman's clear desire to capture rather than to kill, Sawyer, 29. Captives could be sold and the Vikings grew rich from the slave trade. Clearly it was more profitable to carry monks away from their abbeys and people from their farms than to kill them and the records of the time suggest this is what Rollo did. When Charles found he could not stop Rollo in any way, he fell back on the precedent of paying a Viking chief to leave or, as in the case of Veland, and others, to stay but fight for West Francia instead of plundering it. He proposed an offer of land to Rollo, along with marriage to his daughter Gisla, if the Viking would become his Christian vassal. Rollo accepted and the Treaty of St. Clair sur Ept was signed in 911. The lands Rollo was given became Normandy and he remained true to his word, protecting West Francia from further Viking raids and improving every aspect of his region. He reformed the laws and encouraged trade and agriculture as well as campaigning with Charles the Simple to restore order in other regions. The reign of Charles the Simple and Rollo of Normandy marked the first prolonged time of peace and order since West Francia was established in 843. Charles's rule was challenged by Robert I, 922-923, Odo's younger brother and himself a powerful count, over a dispute concerning rights and titles in the kingdom of Lotharingia, formerly of Middle Francia, and conflict broke out. Rollo fought for Charles at the Battle of Soissons in 923 in which Robert I was killed but his army won. Charles was captured and Rollo retreated to Normandy. Robert I was succeeded by Rudolf, Count of Burgundy and Troyes, who married Robert's daughter Emma of France and took the crown as Rudolf of France, 923-936. Charles the Simple remained in captivity until his death in 929 and Rollo retired from leadership in 927, dying in c. 930 of natural causes, most likely in his capital at Rouen. Charles the Simple and Rollo of Normandy had stabilized West Francia to allow for actual growth and development of the region. Although there would be further hostilities and military conflicts during the reign of Louis IV, 936 to 954, the great King Lothair, 954 to 986, who united the region, Louis V, 966 to 987, culminating in the rise of Hugh Capet, 987 to 996, founder of the Capetien dynasty and the Kingdom of France. 